All right, thanks for watching. And I actually got a lot of requests for this and I finally want to do this. Namely, given a matrix, I want to find the null space of that matrix. So, for, for instance, let's find, let's see, so uh, let's find null of A where A is simply 3 minus 6, 9, 0, and 2 minus 4, 7, 2, and 3 minus 6, 6, minus 6. And by the way, the question finding null space is a bit vague. At the end, I will give you a better uh, characterization. So, what is the null space? Well, in French, nul means zero. So, if you say to someone, tu es nul, it means like you're nothing. You're very, it's a very bad word. And also in German, null means zero. So, it's a cool word. <laughs> it means lots of things. And in particular, it has to deal with the zero vector. So, null of A, all this is, it's just the solutions to ax equals zero. Or in other words, the set of x in Rn where ax equals zero. Where A is an m by n matrix. And in particular, the thing that confused me a lot when I took linear algebra you're usually used to outputs, right? Like ax equals to b. But null space of a, as in n, it deals with the inputs. You're really looking at the set of x such that ax equals 0. And by the way, that's a great mnemonic. n as in rn as in input. That's right. It's very good. So. In other words, to find all of A, all you need to do is to solve AX equals zero. So let's do that using row reduction. So solve AX equals zero, which means write the same thing down, but with a column of zeros. So minus six, minus four, minus six, nine, seven, six, zero, two, minus six, and then zero, zero, zero. Well, before we handle this, you can handle the truth. Uh, we can notice, just so we can sort of factor three out from the first row, so let's divide by three. And also here, you can also divide by three. That's nice. It's a nice Saturday here. So one minus two, three, zero, zero. And then 2 minus 4, 7, 2, 0. And then 1 minus 2, 2, minus 2, 0. And then what we would like to do, we would like, again, to use the reduce row echelon form and I come back to that. Uh, so let's get rid of the 2 and let's get rid of the 1. So let's subtract 2 times the first row from the second row and Let's subtract the first row from the third row. And then what you get is 1 minus 2, 3, 0, 0. And then let's see. So 0. And then let's see. Uh, 4 minus 4, that's 0. And then minus 6 plus 7, that's 1. And then 2, 0. And then 0, 0, minus 1, minus 2, 0. How nice! Those two things are almost the same. So let's add the second row to the third row. And we get, let's see, 1 minus 2, 3, 0. Again, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 2. 0, 0, 0, 0. All right. That is indeed the row echelon form of the matrix. But usually that is useful. Use the row echelon form. But 
For the null space, you really have to dig deeper and use a reduced row echelon form, which I like to remind you, R, R, E, F, the pivots have to be one and the stuff above the pivots and below the pivots have to be zero. So we have to continue and subtract three times the second row from the first row and we get one minus two, zero, 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 and zero, zero, one, two, zero, and zero, 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 zero. Very nice. This is indeed the reduced row echelon form, which means we can find all space of A now. Okay, but before we do that, it's always useful to figure out the free variables first, because you want to ask yourselves, what do you solve for? Well, let's look at the pivots. There's a pivot here and there's a pivot here. And the non-pivot columns here are actually useful. They tell us what the free variables are. Namely, automatically, we know that the second and the fourth variable, let's call it y and t, are precisely the free variables. So, what do we get then? X, wait, where's the... Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, if you multiply this by minus three, you get a minus six. Sorry about that. I was like, where is the minus six going? Okay. Then, if you solve that, we get x minus 2y minus 6t equals 0, and z plus 2t equals 0. And then we just get x equals 2y plus 6t, and z equals minus 2t. All right, very good. Then, what is our vector? is x, y, z, t. And again, why do we do this? Because the null space, we want to solve for x such that a x equals 0. So x precisely gives us our null space. And again, this is a confusing thing. We're dealing with inputs here. So then, we get x, y, z, t. That's 2y plus 6, t. And then y minus 2, t and t, and let's separate out y and t, so 2y, y, 0, 0, plus 6t, 0, minus 2t, t, and notice this is precisely y times 2, 1, 0, 0, plus t times 6, 0, minus 2, 1. Okay. This is how to find a null space. This is sort of what we did so far, solving ax equals zero. Now let's um, analyze this a little bit. Let's put a little geometric flavor to this. Because notice, y and t are free. There's no free lunch. Well, there is a free lunch. Here. There are two of them. So what, do we, what does that tell us? The null space is the set of Linear combinations, so if you want set of multiples of 2, 1, 0, 0, plus multiples of 6, 0, minus, 6, 0, minus 2, 1. In other words, the set of linear combinations of those two vectors. In other words, the null space is just the span of those two things. And this will always be true. The null space will always be a span. So null space of A is just the span of 2, 1, 0, 0. And 6, 0, minus 2, 1. Yeah. And here's a miracle. I call this the miracle of row reduction. Turns out, if you row reduce, those vectors will always be linearly independent. And it still amazes me that this is true, but I just think it's because row reducing is just applying invertible operations to your matrix. And that's why it sort of 
preserves the span and just I guess by the form of the reduced row echelon form it turns out those vectors will be linearly independent so because those vectors will always be linearly independent and they span the null space by definition those vectors will always be a basis so the correct question will then be find a basis for null space of a well a basis is simply those two vectors 2 1 0 0 and 6 0 minus 2 1 I know there's a song you will always be my baby well this will always be a basis okay <laughs> so particular this is a basis for null of a and just a couple of remarks what is this saying what does null of a look like well first of all it's in r4 so null of a will always be a subspace of rn so here our matrix had four columns so r4 and in this case it becomes a 2d object in r4 so in other words it becomes a plane in r4 so this is r4 which we can't even visualize and those are two vectors null of a is just the, a plane in this space which I think makes linear algebra so beautiful because you cannot visualize the fourth dimension, yet you know that null of a has to be a plane in this fourth dimension. So that's good. And lastly, what is null of a? It measures how bad a matrix is. For example, this matrix here, it's a very bad matrix. It has literally no information. And null of A is actually very big. It's all of R3 because any vector satisfies AX equals zero. On the other hand, this matrix here, it's the best matrix ever. And null of A, if you remember, in this case, AX equals zero implies X equals zero. So in this case, null of A is just the zero vector, which is small. So you see, the bigger the null space, the worse the matrix. So I like to call it, if you like steak, it's sort of the fat part of the steak. It measures how bad a matrix is. That's why, in general, we don't really like null spaces because they just tell you this matrix is bad. Here, it's sort of the badness is a factor of two, if you like. All right, so I hope you like this null space extravaganza. Uh, if you like this, uh, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and please click like. Thank you very much.